right, it is three after ten. Brian had been on time, we would have started. Today. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to welcome all of our board members. We all one short. One, two, three. Two, two six, short. Two short. Well, we'll want to be here late. The other one won't be here late. Um, but I, I do want to welcome you all. And our guest. Tell us again your name and your interest in the commission. Um, my name's Anna DeWitt. I've lived in Darlington my whole life, and I'm just here to record your meeting. I record public meetings all over Darlington. Okay. The county, the city, I do Williamson Park. Um, just any time we have a public meeting and I'm off work, I record it and then I post it. Thank you. I post it to my page and I'll give you my card and so that the citizens can watch videos. Okay. So I did the county council meeting the other night. We've had 810 people watch the video so far this week. So those are people who are shut-ins or their work won't allow them to get to a county council meeting or they want to be involved but they don't have the time to do it so they can just go home and get on YouTube or Facebook and watch the meeting and I do a little unbiased summary, you know, just the facts, none of my, none of my opinions. Um, and then they can just read the little summary or they can watch the video. Okay. And that is all free. I just do it on my spare time. <laughs> so I, I've been trying, I've had y'all on my calendar for a while now to come out here, so I just had this morning off, so I'm here to record you. <laughs> um, If y'all will look at your minutes, hopefully you've had a chance to review those on page four, the January 30th minutes. <coughs> See a typo? Yeah. Please let, let me know where I can get it corrected. Which? In the middle of the projects. Okay. It would spell like I would do it. Well, WNT. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm going to send them and not even read them. I just put them in. The, <laughs> we must do your job. I, I just put it in where project conservation exists. Uh, we will be receiving or won't be able to. I see. Or will not be able to. I'm going to accept the minutes. Motion and second. I second. Suzanne second, is it? <laughs> um, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Thank you so much. Um, our next item of business is to talk about the markers. Um, obviously, the uh, Hartford Colored Cemetery is off the marker list. It is duly installed. Very nice festive occasion that day. Well, <laughs> side, but um, it's installed. Um, <coughs> don't know of any other significant. We'll talk more about the dedication of the Hartford Cotton Mill, which is in a couple of weeks, 15th. Um, it's coming Monday week. Again, it should be a very good affair, so mark your calendar if you already have it. 11 o'clock. Hey, hey, Carolyn, how you doing? On uh, February 15th. There are two additional markers in the United. Okay. That y'all will not know about. One is Byerly Hospital. Okay. The Byerly Foundation, of course, uh, previous historian who worked with them and they had um, refrained on numerous occasions from funding a marker in honor of the Byerly Hospital. They now want to do that and we're already working on the text for that as well as for the Arcade Hotel, Sunoco Products Company uh, want to supply the marker in honor of the hotel. So uh, those markers are both in progress. Um, while we're talking about markers, I want to let you know that the archive have not filled the position, so it's still in a holding pattern. They're really taking their time on the interviews to get the right fit where they don't have to do this again. So until they get someone in role, all state approval for historical markers is on hold. Um, as of right now, um, all the money is in for Bethesda. Um, so um, we're, um, we're going to be submitting it, even though they're on hold, we're going to be submitting it. Cherry Grove. Um, okay, so, so we've gotten more money than the 1500 Yep, yep. So, so they're paid in full. Paid full. They're paid in full uh, as of last week. Um, Cherry Grove, we... Um, 
we're just about done with the text <laughs> and and um, once we do I've tried to call him preacher I can't even call him back I've talked to his wife twice but um, I haven't been able to get in touch with him so I've, I've just been moving ahead um, we um, have also found out they're not on here but um, Centerville uh, Methodist Church they are starting a fundraising campaign to raise money for their marker. They're kicking that off with a family reunion in April. They're wanting to do a double-sided marker, one side referencing the church, the other side referencing the school. So um, they're... Um, Add that to the link. Yeah, and I put it on the, on the other page, so we'll... I thought it was, Yeah, so we'll just be able to roll it to the front. Okay. There's the deal. Yep. That's, that's right, Karen. Senator. Now, you mentioned the fire the hospital. The foundation, you think, is going to do They that? are. Dick and Bly, the city was there. Um, the city is erecting the marker to be in their name, but the understanding that Natalie gave me, and I just got email clarification yesterday, was that she's on the impression that the fire the foundation is going to be. Yes, they've got something they've got to work out. Yeah. <laughs> well, when, when I saw Dick at the um, Colored Cemetery, he said the city is stepping up and doing that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, which, which mm -hmm. they typically do. Yeah. Um, yeah. We've got a real. Um, we know somebody. <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to put a question mark on that yeah. right now. I'll. Um, Okay. I inquire. Well, it, obviously we got a lot of them in the works um, in one fashion, form, or another. Um, and um, hopefully the state can get somebody on board shortly to start approving some of these things. We, um, we are. We've got two that are in the archive submitted waiting, and then we've got a possibility of eight that will come up and be waiting for approval once we submit them. So we may do eight markers this year. If they hire somebody. If they hire somebody. Yeah. Okay, all right, that's, that's where we are with that. Um, historical calendar report. We're uh, doing good. Matter of fact, I've, I've ended up changing two months, going back and looking at it and reviewing. We, um, uh, sort of changed out the design for November and uh, we've done the same thing for March. Um, just, I guess the benefit of having something working on it for so long, you have an opportunity to go back and review and anyway, we decided that um, we really wanted to do something about the Long Bluff Declaration for November. We thought that was extremely important, so we uh, redesigned November. So we probably will be bringing the final draft to y'all within the next month or two. Huh? Excuse me, go back to that marker you were talking about the center of you. Yes, ma'am. Explain that again. There, you know, you can do it. Markers come in two fashions. It's in the same text, both sides, or it's different text, different sides. They're, um, the site where they were at is unique. It started as a church school combination, and then um, eventually the school went away oh, okay. so what they want to do is on one side they want to fund oh, okay. for the school referencing its history and the other side the, the church you said school i didn't know what that was that's yeah okay that's yeah, it's a public school public yeah. african-american yeah, school okay just like cherry Blue. Yeah. that's right um technology equipment report right. um the <laughs> scanner is progressing well with negatives so that's functioning as we need it um, to do and um, it's um, it's it's working well. We're quite pleased with it. It's a slow process because it literally scans um, at an extremely high DPI. It's scanning about 3,600 DPI, but um, we're able when we're done. Uh, when that image goes online, folks are able to choose the size of reproduction image or download. So that if they want to take a photograph that's originally a five by seven and upload that or download it to their system and then print that as a, um, a eight by ten or eleven by seventeen, there's enough resolution that it'll allow them to do that without distorting the image. Okay. Uh, Mark a restoration. I did talk to Keith Parnell, and uh, he has sandblasted the Augustine. Wilson marker 
it sandblasted as he is expected, uh, cleaned up good. Uh, he will be painting it silver next. Has an idea on how he can do the black one of the experimenting things, so he will be experimenting with that. He is to call me within the next week or two when he gets it painted silver, then we'll talk about the black. Um, he will like, basically hand paint the black and then clear coat the old marker with clear, uh, which I think is what um, see what see what they do. And you and he talked about backgrounds and foregrounds. Um, the black, as you said, hand painted, he probably also puts the silicone on the on the silver part, so a little like a black, a block out process. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, good. It's a good idea. It's uh, the, luckily the, the letters are raised, so it mm -hmm. makes it. I don't want to say easy, but it's fairly easy to paint the raised portion. It's a relief. Uh, it's called a relief. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, at that time, once he gets that and finished, because I took it to him. Um, and he's keeping up with his time as to how much. Then I will go back and pick it up. Ultimately, if we like that price of his uh, restoration, then we may venture out into him picking them up, restoring them, and then reinstalling them. That's kind of an unknown for him. He, he feels comfortable doing what he's doing, but finding these markers, he's never done that for him. I have a clue to how long that's going to take, and, and I understand that. Couple of that with the fact that we do have a price from Siwa, where we know what they will restore and one farm. And they obviously are not picking up and returning. 850 bucks. So we're trying to compare apples for apples. Yes, and then quite frankly, if he's within that range, that 850 will keep him right in. Um, if he's more than that, then we'll <coughs> box him up and send him to Siwa. Okay, um, so that's conservation efforts. Uh, Bet Phillips donation. If you will look at page 12, you'll see the resolution the council passed uh, Monday night. Uh, that resolution is the work of a lot of folks and a lot of time. Uh, basically, that resolution restricts that fund uh, to the purpose of the historical commission as well as the interest. Uh, which we were extremely excited about. Most funds, that way the interest is not restricted. The interest goes back to the general fund for the county. Uh, council went beyond what they normally do and they wanted us to have the interest as well for the betterment of, of, um, of our historical preservation and of course the advancement of the commission. So we're extremely grateful for that. That was a bold move on their part. If you look to the right, you see the hashtag, thank you bet. Um, there is a copy of the check. I figured y'all would want to see that, as well as the deposit ticket where we deposited that money. <laughs> so it is duly in the account. It is duly there. Do we have um, new guards at the bank? Um, no. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to take some money over I know. It doesn't stay in the bank long. No. Uh, just to give y'all some background, um, the committee that we set aside to give us a subcommittee that we were able to call uh, for guidance, we will be communicating with that subcommittee probably first of next week. We will realign. I think one of the people will probably come off because they're not really as much interested in the building part of it as they were the finance side of it. So what we will do is they will still function as a subcommittee. Uh, we will use them to help formulate um, topics to bring back to the board for y'all to approve. Bear in mind, every bit of what happens with that money has to be approved by y'all. And then, of course, it goes to council for them to review and uh, make the final vote. So um, a lot of policy updates, um, things like if we want to name rooms within the building after donors that maybe are able to purchase a room or something like that. Um, we'll have to be coming back with policies that relate to that as well as issues that relate to buildings. So within the next couple of weeks, you'll be hearing a little bit more about that, and um, we'll keep you posted as that committee starts functioning to bring material back to y'all. Um, refresh, Brian. Um, no, I'm on that committee. Lois, 
Yeah. Um, Lawrence is on it. Yeah. Carolyn's on it. Carolyn's on it. Um, uh, you've got Robbie Kilgo on that committee. Yeah. And there's one of the first. Charles Huffer. Charles Huffer. Well, that's all. And myself. Okay. Well, well Charles is probably the one that would really. Now, if you want to stay, we're more than welcome to stay. Right. But he, he would be the one that's probably really not interested. He was our financial person, mm -hmm. and so uh, since we are not going that route, then we would certainly offer him the opportunity to stay. But that is that subcommittee is moving more towards a construction committee, a building committee, than it is a uh, uh, financial foundation committee. I will tell you that if you did not notice the red or the pink triangle in front of the building right outside of the front door, that's the surveyor's benchmark. We are working with Nesbitt Surveying so that they can do a full topo survey of the property. Um, that will give us elevations and it will plot the building on our property so that we'll actually have a plan we can hand to the architect and say, here, this is your foundation, let's build from here. Now, are we looking at buildings back here, here, or there? It's all dependent upon that survey. Yes, We've got to get it done. Thought. We've got to get it done to see just where our property lines are. We have <coughs> talked with the city about what legal setbacks are from the roads and from the lines. Well, have we talked to this nice individual <laughs> that has the grown up place up the bank? Um, the county has. Um, <laughs> St. John's Heritage owns one portion of it, and then there's a Lyles out of North Carolina that has the second half of it, the back half. Um, the um, the county, at one point, we're negotiating with both of them to purchase that property, and I, I don't know where they stand with that. They were looking at possibly retention pond area over there for the, the new complex if they went that route, but when they were acquiring land, they were trying to get it. Um. And again, we, we talked before, but there's going to be a lot of more work going on. Um, Brian and I have already at least started talking about it. I would encourage all y'all to continue to think about it. But this topo and plant is going to tell us a lot about where we can add, either by virtue of the, the um, fall, since this, this lot does have a significant fall to it, um, it'll also tell us how much space we have from this building to take over to the next street. Do we have enough space there? Or is the building going to have to be put on the other side of the building? Or are we going to put it in the back? Um, I think the general consensus is it will be added to this building. <coughs> For several reasons. One, access. One manager, one staff can operate this building and the adjoining building, um, archives and museum. Um, we, we do want to share space, have more research space That's right. for our patrons to work. And so um, it, it just just needs to be added to this building. Yeah. Um, and, and again, until we get some definite dimensions we don't really know where we can add it. Right. Uh, my opinion has been to add it to this building um, in the same manner that the jail is, by the way it looks. So 20 years from now, we won't say, oh, they added that building out. Mm -hmm. It needs to look sympathetic to this building. That's right. so you, you have underground to what to go find out. Yeah. Well, quite frankly, our desire is not to have a sub basement by way of under the ground, particularly with what we're doing, archiving. Um, it's got a lot of moisture problems with that. I'd rather build whatever we're going to build on top of the ground. Yeah, but the way things now, you need underground. Uh, Oh, yeah, this is it. <laughs> yeah. um, we, we get into a lot of problems. And it's with good you on that committee because you know about building. Yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, just kind of bear with us we, until we can get that map and kind of get started. There, there, there's a lot of ideas floating around. Uh, 
So some have said, well, you, you need to add a prettier building than what you've got. Well, it is what it is, folks. This, yeah. this is the way this building is. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and, and some have said, oh, yeah, it's a museum. It needs to be artsy fartsy and all that. But, yeah, okay, I, I get it. I'd say, if we were building a separate detached somewhere else, okay, I, I could deal with it. But it needs to be sympathetic to this building. I think. Mm -hmm. Now, Carolyn, you certainly in the in, in the arts. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, they should be a comparison to. Yeah, because compatible the, with. Because the surrounding buildings, mm -hmm. you would want to stick out like a sore thumb. Right. But the interior will have the modern. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. We don't want to be like. So yeah, I, I think we're going in the right direction. We just need to get inches and feet. Yeah, and that, that drawing will let us have yeah. that information. Okay. All right. We so that's. Inside the that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Probably will be a two-story building. Yeah. In nature. Um, Brian has done a fair amount of looking at museums now, square footage-wise. Yeah. You're looking at 3,000, 4,000 square feet of exhibit space. Yes. Uh, we, we could be doubling that for more research area, office space, and our storage. So, right. yeah, we, we could be looking at a potential 6,000 square foot building with renovations back into this building to include on that one. Yes. What size is the Charleston Museum? I do not know. Um, I, I, I have specifically worked with the Hartsville Museum. Yeah. I've worked with um, the Canyon Archives. We've worked with the Fayetteville Museum of Transportation and the Fayetteville History Museum. We've worked with the museum in Laurenburg. Um, comparable size to what we're looking at. Uh, when I remembered Charleston, I thought it was fairly, it was a little bit larger than what we would have wanted. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even, I didn't bother calling them. Um, yeah, I've been to Austin. Carolyn, you, you, you've been in for the Hartford Museum numerous mm -hmm. times. I've been on it. It's um, 3,000 square feet. Yeah. 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 Oh, really? Maybe 35. Less, 35. Well, when you take the office. Exhibit space. Yeah, the yeah. exhibit space. Um, you're looking about 28 when you take okay. the gallery out. Because what happened, they, in the beginning, they used to have it a lot, a lot more space for exhibit. Then they start putting in the historical areas right. into permanent exhibits, which minimize your right. display. Yeah. And, and a lot of it's typical for a museum to have movable exhibits, yeah. changing exhibits. Yeah. Um, and so as long as we got the space, we'll, we'll, we'll change it. Um, it's sort of, they've added on, um, so now they're supposed to be sending me the final totals of the addition. They, they just acquired that gun collection and have that entire building yeah. wing added for it. Um, the original core structure, if, if I remember off the top of my head, I think it was about 3,000. Yeah, I think we'll find communities of, of our size are going to have in that yeah. 25 to 3,500 square feet range. Yeah. But the problem with the Hartsy Museum is they, they naturally, they end up going across the street. Did you see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 For story. Yeah. I'm, on, I'm on that, um, Anyway, I think that's something really I'm um, sure you're considering that beyond the space yeah. is you have got to keep your um, other displays, you know, so you can change them. Right. And I think there's going to be a lot more interest when people see it and when they need more room and we the road for donations. Right. That right now we might not be. We have been, donations have increased greatly since words got out and, and I think they will <laughs> yeah. once they yeah. see it. Yeah. <laughs> and we're gonna need room 
Well, I think the young people don't want the antiques that we have collected over the years. Yeah. They're not as sentimental about those things as the sweeper and I think they want to get rid of it's not on the iPods, <laughs> not on the iPods, or not on the phones. Yeah. Get it. <laughs> right. Love. Okay. Um, there are some that still that still want them. Yeah. Some, yeah, but I mean, the majority, majority, majority yeah. don't want yeah. polished silver and. No. Uh -oh. <laughs> Down, no, no. <laughs> Any other old heads? Yeah. Any other old business to come for us? Uh, we've not talked about this, but um. I'm gonna. We we have talked about the buildings. I'm gonna give you this information in old business. Um, we um, installed right after I took over at the commission humidity monitors to monitor humidity of the buildings, and um, we have those on all floors. Of course, we're monitoring the time. You know, time itself monitors itself, but light, humidity, temperature. We regulate those extremely close in the building. Um, after the two hurricanes, we've noticed that the humidity levels in the building have continuously been rising. We got to a critical point with that about a week and a half ago, working with the county and the county administrator, and um, we had to do some emergency work to try to get humidity in control. We now have three portable humidifiers, or dehumidifiers, uh, one on each of the floors other than first floor. We have brought those numbers back in line where we need them to be. And um, it's, um, it's a temporary measure. We know that when we build, either way, we're going to tear out air conditioning that we've got because of where the base units are at. So at that point, we'll have to do some work on this building with dehumidification. And um, there was no need to go in and do anything major now, considering we have to tear out a bunch of that later. So um, it's a temporary fix, but it's, 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 it's not an adequate fix. It's a little bit better than adequate. Uh, it just requires a little bit more work on our part, but we're getting the same result, which is wonderful. It's all about those documents and making sure we maintain those elements and humidity being one of them. How are you disposing of the collected water? Um, it's, dumping? It's dumping. Yeah, we're dumping it. The one on the basement is actually, we were able to pack it into the... Um, the pumping system that pumps it out of the building with the air conditioning system. Because you don't have any water on the second and third floor. Second, no, second floor has a pumping system as well, but we're having to work with an uh, electrician to have an outlet put by yep. where the pump's at. There's already a, there's a, there's power there, we just gotta have an outlet. So um, they're gonna be doing that, and once they do, we'll move that unit right there where that pump's at, and we'll be able to pipe it right into the pump, and it'll pump. Um, the, the, the water that accumulates out of the building. Third floor is going to be the problem. There is no drain on third floor other than the air conditioner and it's in the, that, the ceiling. So, um, you know, we'll probably still have to carry third floor down. Okay. But as of right now, I'm getting about five gallons a day. Oh. A lot of moisture. A lot of moisture. Um. <laughs> okay. Right. That, uh, thank you for that update, Brian. New business. Um, we'll probably deviate a little bit from that. Um, we'll talk about Hunter. Yeah, um, I, I do need to let y'all know. Um, Hunter Jordan, um, right here at St. Matthews, has taken another calling, so he will be moving out of the Darlington area. Oh. So effective immediately he tendered his resignation and he was supposed to have gotten me an email yesterday so uh, you'll see a blank page in your packet that is actually for his resignation they will be uh, he and his wife and family will be moving up to Greenville South Carolina they have taken a position with a uh, with a ministry that does collegiate ministries and he'll be the guy that's over all of their efforts in the entire South as far as collegiate ministries do. Mm. So it's a, a bold move for him, a lot different from church pastoral work, but he's excited nonetheless. So he does represent Bobby Kilgo's district, so Bobby Kilgo will have to do another appointment to mm -hmm. fill that position. Um, so we'll, we'll have to wait and see what happens there as far as us getting a replacement. So we will be one short That's right. in the meantime. Um, Brian, can you continue taking notes and our well, minutes? Already doing it. Okay. Right now on my program as we go. Uh, until we can um, um, select another secretary, as I remember, 
selecting a secretary is usually called pulling eye teeth. <laughs> Nobody wants to do it. And I get that. Um, okay, so with that in mind, I will send around our um, tally sheet and also uh, this card you want to sign, do you? Yeah, for her. Thank you, Lord. If y'all don't mind. So we'll sign those two and, and get those out to him. While that's going around, I see Brian on the next page, which is not on our agenda. Do you want to tell us anything about the um, year in review? Yeah, this is, this is, we normally do this in January, but with all we had going on with that um, state and all the meetings and, and the, the work we were doing with it, it sort of got sidelined. So you're getting my year in review a little late. Um, I, I do want to sort of give you the highlights. Uh, collection realignment, we did continue that. Uh, we have completed that, so now all the collections are housed within the building where they are you know, in line with like items. Uh, we were excited to finish that. Um, collection expansion, we have seen extreme expansion growth within the collection this year. Word got out about April that we were working towards the museum compliments of the, the donation that Vets Estate gave us. And um, as a result of that, we have seen massive amounts of growth with that. One would be the John or Frank and Mary Sue Wells collection given by John Wells. That's over 50 images. And then online, of course, there's, um, I think it's over 53 images online that we're now uh, maintaining. 53,000. 53,000. So um, it's, um, it, it's a massive collection. Uh, with that, we've been getting material from the War Between the States Museum in Florence. There's some folks who've been pulling material out of there. That's been making its way over here as well. Um, so a uh, lot, of, lot of information coming our way. Uh, conservation efforts here at the Commission. We've continued our efforts with that. We're still working with the Hartsville uh, community in regards to the Marion Street Cemetery, the Hartsville Colored Cemetery, helping identify unknown burials there. Um, we uh, did a total of about $19,000 in conservation work that was at no cost to taxpayers for Darlington County. That's all from private donations and contributions that came in directly for conservation of material. Um, the largest thing that we did this year was the conservation work on the uh, equity books. They were suffering greatly from what's called red rot. Those were leather journals where the, the bindings on the leather had started deteriorating and the, the, the factory finish, if you will, was gone. Um, we processed those. Those are now sealed in, um, are, are not sealed, but stored in um, acid buffered boxes to sort of mitigate the effects of the acid. And it creates a microclimate within that box to, to offer that, those journals a little bit more security. So um, we, uh, we did that. Of course, those boxes are expensive, so um, uh, limited to what we could do there. Uh, community involvement, uh, some phenomenal information that we've been able to reach out to the community with. Um, I facilitated 201 speaking engagements uh, for 2018. Uh, we had uh, a total of 473 people visit the Jacob Kelly House during 2018. Our Facebook posts were uh, clicked on and viewed by 5,122,828 people from all over the world. Our WordPress blog received 30,000 views. Um, we regained a market share from where we lost market share last year. We're back up to a 51%. Uh, of what we lost, so uh, we're happy there. We changed our style back to where it was more photographs and descriptions rather than sort of dissertations. And that's what folks said they wanted. We did that and regained market share, so folks responded well to that. Uh, we did have the opportunity, or I had the opportunity to speak at two state level conferences, one in North Carolina, one in South Carolina, and then four local conferences, those not counted in our main speaking engagements. And then, of course, um, I am serving on a couple other boards as representatives for the Historical Commission. Of note, I am serving on the South Carolina board there at the South Carolina Library. Um, statistics that y'all will find interesting. Um, we're always wondering about what we're doing and how many people we're reaching. So the Commission served physical patrons in 2018, 1,979 people. 
Uh, we had 241 working days. We had some days that were canceled due to weather or what have you. And um, that averages and equates to 8.21 physical patrons per day. 2018 saw a 103% increase in physical patrons over our 2015 stats. March was our busiest month with 308 physical patrons. The commission processed 492 email work orders for research, which took a total of 1,992 uh, hours. During 2018, we spent 43% of our total paid staff hours assisting digital patrons that were not in our building. Hmm. Now that's not counting any of the, the seven to, or 1979 patrons that were physical patrons in the building, so kind of keep that in mind. Um, top five visiting states, of course, South Carolina being the base. North Carolina sent 60 people, Utah sent 29 this year, Georgia sent 28, and Virginia sent 27. Um, Facebook information, we talked about our Facebook hits. Uh, that equates to about 584 people viewing our Facebook page every hour, 24 hours a day. That is a 12.3% increase over 2017. So folks are hungry for learning about their local history and we're, we're glad to be able to partner for that. Our most popular post was on March 12th, um, 2018. It received 30,124 views within the first 24 hours. And it was a post of Tom Cruise's, it says Tom in here, but it's Tom Cruise's Darlington speeding ticket from March 12, 1990. Um, a lot of folks were interested in that. Um, our WordPress has done well. It, um, like I said, reflects a 51% increase over 2017 with a total of 30,320 folks viewing that. Um, interesting statistics about the commission. We received 2,453 email requests. Now that's not necessarily what we're having to do research. Some of those are quick answers, uh, which represents an 85% increase over the last year. We received 2,585 phone calls for assistance regarding local history or contents within the building. That's a 48% increase over the last year. Our staff hours were supplemented by 90 hours um, directly connected with interns and 685 volunteer hours from folks in the community just volunteering to help us out. Now this is what I found unique. Add up all of our patron contact, physical patrons, emails, phone calls, Facebook clicks and views, WordPress views, and we had a direct impact on 5,159,969 people. That's equivalent to everyone in South Carolina, according to the census in 2018, participating with the commission with a few folks from North Carolina and South Carolina, considering the population of South Carolina was only 5,084,127 people. So it was a very good year for us. We, um, we did a lot on a little, and um, we um, were happy to be able to interact with folks with their history. It's all about giving them access to their history. It's not mine, it's not yours, it's ours. Thank you, Brian, for the two things. One, the report, and secondly, keeping up with the report. Um, staggering to keep up with that. Um, See, that's what you do for Keep in mind, of course, you know, this all obviously is forwarded on to, to, to our council members. That's right. We invite them to come, a few do come. Um, but they don't know what goes on here. Yes, sir. I just need to speak with him. It's going to be a few minutes. Okay. I'll just come back. Okay, thank you. Okay, here you are. I'll just come back. Thank you. They, they don't know what we do unless we supply them this information. Um, <clears throat> so, it's, so it's twofold. One, for our information, as well as um, the people we represent need to know this information. Um, Anna, I'll, I'll ask you, and you're in the Facebook and, and business, probably way up more than I am. A little bit. <laughs> are, aren't these some pretty good numbers? Oh, this is astronomical. I mean, I did, just for uh, comparison, I did a Facebook post for Sarah's Porch, the new restaurant that opened right. in Darlington. I had 13,000 views okay. online. I mean, that's just one little drop in the bucket. And you were tickled to that. I know. I was like, whoo! <laughs> so, 
I mean, these are just astronomical numbers. I, I am blown away by this. I, I am very embarrassed to admit that I did not know what y'all do. But I have lived here. I was born in the city limits. I've been lived here my whole life and did not know what y'all do. But this is fascinating. So well, I applaud y'all. This is awesome. And again, we're not doing it for necessarily for, for Brian's praise or for the commission's praise. We've gotten the information. It's our responsibility to oh, make it available. I agree with you. I think our history is, is wonderful, and I love living in a small town. <laughs> well, Brian, again, we appreciate you putting that together and sharing it with us. Um, well, the rest of the meeting pales in comparison. <laughs> <laughs> that news. Uh, okay. Do tell us a little bit about some donations on page 10. On okay, we, we um, donations have come in, started coming in pretty, pretty heavily. Um, we uh, we did receive um, some some unique information or some unique artifacts. Um, there are two portraits of the Hunley, two different designs, and each of those have a reproduction of Dixon's. Um, Cohen, which of course was a shot uh, battle preceding him going down in the Hunley. Of course, we know he did lose his life in the Hunley. Um, there are two 45 caliber um, uh, Civil War pistols that uh, came in. One reproduction uh, Colt. It's a commemorative that honors the the activity that happened at Fort Sumter. Um, so. Um, both of those are here, as well as a Jefferson Davis tribute rifle. Um, I um, bear in mind I took these with the understanding that um, if we do an exhibit relating to the people that relate to the Civil War, those would give indication of what folks would have had to deal with. These are not items that we took to permanently display all the time. They would be a part of a display that related to the life and times of folks that were involved in the course of the Civil War. So for a, a mobile or a periodic exhibit that would be here for a while and then would be taken down and changed out, um, that's what these would sort of supplement and they're good art artifacts to supplement what it would be like. I will be honest with you, I was amazed at how heavy that rifle was. <laughs> Those guys were, um, they were working just toting the gun. So, um, you know, it sort of helps substantiate what, what life would have been like for those folks. Not dealing with politics or anything like that, but just simply looking at what life would have been like and, and things we can do to illustrate what that life would have involved. Well, um, we got some annuals. We're always in, in search of, of high school annuals. We were excited when we got two of the lost years for Rosenwald. Um, and then, of course, we got a, a suitcase, an odd suitcase in that uh, contained miscellaneous information relating to World War II ration information directly connected with the community. And also, it is not listed on here. Uh, we have not got the final tally of everything that we have received. But probably one of the most monumental collections that we received this past year is the Lawrence Kerrigan collection. We have received all of the original receipts. Uh, the letter substantiating the order and of the blueprints for the Kerrigan House in Society Hill, as well as substantial documents and letters that relate back to the building of the Kerrigan House. That house built 1899-1900. Um, we're um, still trying to formulate the listing of all of that so that we can put it in list format for y'all. But we've had volunteers that's been working on processing that material for about three weeks straight. And pretty much stumble upon that. And stumble upon it. Uh, matter of fact, I'm still getting material from that family. Um, last night I received um, a tote. Which is not the Kerrigan family. Which is, um, yeah, it's, it's in no way connected to the Kerrigan family. It's uh, the family of uh, former House of Representatives member Gary Bird. Um, he bought the Kerrigan house, I guess, early 70s. Yeah. And um, this is material that he gathered out of the house, maybe in the attic or what have you, after he sold the house. Uh, the material was still in his possession and now it's come back into the public trust and uh, it's available for everybody, which is unique. That is an extremely historic home. Of course, on the National Register, it's in the Welch Neff Historic District of the National Register in Society Hill. Um, so it's nice to be able to have those supporting documents that sort of substantiate what we've had as legend now. You know, where the house came from, how it came to be built, that kind of information. Yeah. Well. Again, it just goes to prove that our mission has somewhat changed of recent. Um, we have always taken in 3D artifacts 
sometimes somewhat reluctantly. Sometimes we have to take them to get the flat stock documents. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> the, <laughs> the flat stock document, paper, yeah. picture. That's our main interest. But now with a potential museum coming, we are more interested in guns, rifles, um, things. Hats. Hats. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, again, tell your friends and neighbors if they've got anything um, that they really just don't want, feel free to tell Brian. But, uh, but on the other hand, gotcha. don't be disappointed if he just says, no. it's really not <laughs> yeah. what we're looking for. And I, I'm doing a right good bit of that. And I'm, I'm trying to be very sensitive because when someone does have something they want to give, obviously they feel it has value um, in itself. Usually they have an emotional connection with those items, so we're very sensitive to that. Honored that they felt it was worthy of being a part of our collection. Um, and we try to be very sensitive to the fact that even if it doesn't fit our collection, there may be a collection that fits. So who can we put that person in contact with where that item can get the attention that it deserves and they can get the, the accolades that would benefit their value of the item. Okay. Um, getting back to the agenda, upcoming events, the two main ones that are more listed on page 15, but the um, historical cotton mill is all the one. February 15th from 11 to 12 and the Jacob Kelly open house first Sunday in March which will be March 3rd from 3 to 5 other events again are listed on page 15 for your consideration if you'd like to go conferences what have you um, Staff in the community, Brian, because obviously you're curtailing or at least certainly scaling back on yeah. speaking engagements. We, if, um, if I, anything you need to tell us about. I've had three um, in the last month. Of course, we did do the Scarborough exhibit and the talk with the Scarborough portraits. Um, thank you. Yeah, I, I appreciate, I appreciate the large contingency yeah. of, of the commissioners attending that. Um, I thought we were very well represented. I have got word that they may want me to do that again. They're negotiating now to see if they can work out a Sunday event mm -hmm. and, um, and possibly do that presentation again. Um, I've had several other folks who have contacted me with the opportunities of maybe presenting that on a, a more local level here in Darlington. Um, that talk's already put together so I don't have to do any background work so it's not that difficult just to, to, to present the material. So if that opportunity does present itself here in Darlington, I'm going to be more than honored to do that. Um, we, um, of course, I've, I've a couple other little speaking engagements, but not where I've had to pull work out and actually spend hours doing research on the topic. So little things like that as it comes along incidental as I'm more than willing to do, but some um, of the big stuff, no. Any, any tours coming through March-ish? Um, I have not started working on them now. I do have a group coming in as a connection from the, Spark, from the Scarborough talk that we did in January. I've got some folks that will be at the commission tomorrow morning uh, wanting to spend some time doing some research. Um, as a result of the Scarborough exhibit, they found they had some, some connections, some live connections. They're going to be in town doing research on Thomas Park Live tomorrow and uh, Robert Live. Uh, yeah. But as far as outline, task, you know, organized tours, right now I haven't even started communicating with folks on it. I imagine by mid-February it'll start rolling well, pretty well, quick. And I knew fifth, uh, March, April, yeah. spring of the year is when people like to come in. Yep. Right. Um, of course, you thought he wanted to come, well Charles wanted to come, but, yeah. but um, the other guy, um, yeah. That was more in the summer or fall. I think it's I think it's late summer, early fall. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so much Scarborough and Witherspoon. You know me with the Witherspoon house over around uh, Scott's Crossroads. It was in Lee County, no. right near the edge of. Uh, Sumter County. Mm -hmm. um, it's an old house. 
Yeah. But it's the number, the Witherspoon, something else. And I'm trying to check to see one. It's the first name associated with the Witherspoon, but it burned. Is it on that direction? I don't think so. It's not really good. Um, right after um, Witherspoon. I don't know the, the name. The second half of it. Yeah, I, I don't know. Gotcha. Lee County on the border. Yeah. I'll, I'll see mm -hmm. um, Okay. Any other new business? I think we. Let me ask about this. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Did they have a mock up there? This is about, uh, no. Does Depot? Yeah. They are on the list as as an approved marker for the county, but you know they only fund two historical markers a year, mm -hmm. so they're they're pretty far off in the future. Um, that um. That is substantial history, though. Yeah, that was about the same the thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I try to include updates that way every month for y'all, so that y'all can see what's going on. And um, you know, just so that everybody will know, February the 9th, 1882, Doves Depot becomes Doesville. The original incorporation was for 21 years. So in 1902, uh, incorporation was renewed. Interest in municipal government began to wane. Uh, with the decline of uh, commercial activity in the town and finally on June 19, 1936 the town charter was officially surrendered. That was the town charter for the actual town of Dovesville. Of course it got its start with the creation of the Sherrod Darlington Railroad with the depot station there and um, then of course Daniel Dove becoming the first postmaster there and of course the name Dovesville coming from the Dove family. Let me ask you, do you have a picture of that old building? I did that at all. The depot? Yeah, I, I do. I, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, I've got a picture of the depot. It has been torn down now. Um, Randall Ewan bought it probably, I don't know, five, ten years ago. And it had gotten so derelict that they were able to salvage the lumber. And they've used the lumber for different things. As a matter of fact, a uh, piece of work out of Charleston. They got lumber, a lot of lumber out of the depot. We've got one of the slate shingles here in our exhibit collection. Um, but I do have photographs of them. Oh, yes, okay. ma'am. Ron, I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, talking about volunteer hours. Yes. Yeah. What would a volunteer do if a person volunteered? Okay, I've got, there's several options. One, I do a very large crowdsource online where um, I've got folks that are transcribing documents for me. We've got folks in probably six states that I'll post online to a, to, a, to a shared file, a document I need transcribed. They will log on to the comfort of their own home, type up that document, email it back to me. So that's one option that's available. Now that, that requires a certain amount of ability yeah, to be able to yeah. read you, you've got to be able to read. Documents. You've got to be able to read that script handwriting. Um, and I'm extremely glad that I've got those folks that have partnered with us because we cannot keep up with the volume that we have in-house. We shall have staff to do it. Um, I, I have a volunteer right now that's a designated volunteer. He's going through our family name files, re-alphabetizing those, opening every folder, making sure that the material in those folders are in line. Um, he's relabeling as he's going through. We've got a volunteer right now who's doing nothing but processing material that's coming into the collection, doing the description and putting it in file folders. Um, I've got opportunities for volunteers to index material um, where we've got journals that are unindexed. The journals were created based off, excuse me, based off date entry, not name entry. Which wonderful information to substantiate name, place, and location for genealogy. It would count as a first type source for folks doing lineage of societies or anything like that. Um, but unfortunately, there's no index to those. So going through and extracting and indexing those names, I've got lots of opportunities for that. Um, folks that are keen on computers and scanning, I've got opportunities for folks to help out with scanning documents. We've got over a million photographs in the collection that we're wanting to digitize. So there's always opportunity for folks to help digitize photographs. Um, I've got um, I've got entire collections that we've got that are boxed up that have never been indexed. To have somebody sit down and go through that and sort of organize that and put that together, that kind of stuff's always an opportunity. Um, uh, even things as simple as um, photocopying for us. To have somebody come in and do nothing but run the photocopier and the photocopy material that we've got to give back to the original owner, but we want to keep a copy archived here. 
So there's tons of opportunities for folks to do things. And to be honest with you, we could not do what we do without those volunteer hours. Okay, I asked that to, to tell you this. Um, the Heart School Pilot Club and the Darlington Pilot Club are meeting next Monday. And um, I thought that I would suggest to them if anyone was interested in in volunteering, you know, that they might could, you know, most of these people, they're either got jobs right. or they're retired. I think. Right. So we would need to do something. That you, provide us something to do that wouldn't necessarily involve a computer. Right. That's okay. We've got We're plenty of that stuff. Involve a computer. We've got plenty of that Yeah, stuff. because, I mean, you know, not everybody okay. is computer okay. good. Okay. You know, yeah. a lot of people uh, are willing to volunteer, but they want them to be able to do with, with right. electronics. But right. if you have things that I could do, I'm, I'm using the internet, right. of course, I could do the computer and all that. Right. That's not but if I walked in here and said, Brian, I got several hours, can I help you? Would you, would we you find me you something up. to do? We can hook you up. Yep, we can hook folks up. Yep, we can hook folks up. When I tell them at the pilot club meetings that you are interested in volunteers and they don't have to have a full day or holiday right. themselves for That's right. so much, if they have a half a day, that you could find something that That's right. they can get. That's right. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, we've played enough. Okay. <laughs> yeah. There's plenty. With, with Brian's ability, he can. Yes. You know, he he can put them to work. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I I didn't want to say yeah. anything to them, and then they come down right. here and say, "Well, it can't use computer, computer." Right. Computer, you know. Yeah. Probably, probably the most important thing is Brian just needs to know. When these people are coming. That's right. Very, very right. often yes. walking in here at That's right. 10 35. Well, I'm, I'm pretty yeah. sure that yeah. they, okay. they would let know, but yeah. I'm just using that as an example. Yeah, we can accommodate them. Would be better, I mean, it might be quicker for you to What's that? Know, if you had a list of um, jobs that. I do. And then if, then if, she, if she could give that out, then, then you might office. not have yeah. people coming in here that's wasting your time. Yeah. Right. I'll, email, I'll email you something this afternoon. Okay. Good. Good. Appreciate that not opportunity. Not that their intention would be good, but you might not have the time to mm -hmm. spend trying to explain this, mm -hmm. you got this, you got that, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. I turn to, to the last page of Brian's information. Now, it's the 161 National Register of Properties in Carlton County. Uh, <coughs> you know, I continue to be amazed at Darlington County. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of these 161 are in districts, That's right. yeah. um, those properties, those buildings are much easier to get on the register than an individual piece of property. But to have 161 properties in, in one county, again, is pretty doggone strong. Um, I do a lot of research in the, in the National Register and very often Calhoun counties, even your Lee counties, mm -hmm. will have four or five, eight or ten mm -hmm. properties. Um, so, Darlington County is, is extremely fortunate to have this many pieces of property that are listed on the National Register. And Brian, it's good to have them right here all in a list. <coughs> when they're broken down as single property listings, those are the that particular building. And then you've got your different um, districts. One here in Darlington, uh, downtown historic district, several in Hartsville. But um, mm -hmm. it's, it's good to have all that information on basically two pages. That came about, Cobb does a report every year and um, the county um, emergency management ties in with that. They sent me their copy for me to vet the historical part of that the historical content and they made reference to us having 51 national register properties and I was like whoa wait a second we're three times that much and what they had done is the, the double listings or listings where there were multiple properties they'd only counted those the headings as a property mm -hmm. so in essence they left out uh, for instance in the Cashew Street Spring Street district in Darlington 
counting that as one, they left out 34 properties. Mm -hmm. So um, I wanted to break that down for Cog, and as a, as a result of doing that work, I, I felt like y'all might yeah. want to know what those properties were. So I included in the packet that you get um, for you for you to look over. Um, I was quite amazed when I came up with 161. I figured we probably had about 150, so we were 11 more than what I had thought, and um, it's amazing. You know, you can't go 7.14 miles in Darlington County without encountering the historical marker. After this year, if we get those eight markers up, we'll change that statistical average immediately. And um, I'm curious to see how far you can go without encountering a National Register property. I have not done the math on that yet, but I, wanna, I want to do that and probably will by the next board meeting because these are substantial opportunities for folks to interact with, with major significant structures that uh, the vernacular of that structure is such that even on a national level, they have warranted a little extra attention. Good. It'll probably be further apart. Uh, it will be. Yeah. It will be. It will be. All right. Anybody else have anything for the betterment of the organization? Anna, do you have any questions? Oh, no, sir. I have gotten a lot of information from y'all today. I am super excited. I want to get a little interview with Brian after it's over with, but I am super excited about this. They say we sponsored it, and look at the news article, it says we sponsored it, and my guess is from what I've been able to find out, the program now is defunct with the state. It would have been an application at Harsford that had to simply give the information as far as the, the overview for the area, but since the state's no longer sponsoring that, you know, there's nobody to create signing for it. Yeah, it was a holdover from a previous uh, program that the oh, state that, was running. That, that was just entering this yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. It was it was a holdover from from the state program, and the sign was still there. But unfortunately, there's nobody to replace that sign. Anymore. All right. If there's no other business, then we're going to stand and adjourn it until the first Thursday. February, which happened, no, first, third, March, 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 March,